Today's video, we're covering the top five mistakes that WordPress users make. So guys like me and you, from beginner to expert, this happens at all levels and these mistakes can be very costly and very frustrating. So if this sounds interesting, then keep watching. Mistake number one, not having backups. Probably the easiest and most reliable way to manage backups is through your control panel from your hosting. So for example, Cloudways has a backup uh, tool in its control panel. And most managed web hosts will have something similar to this. And even if you're self-hosting, you can install a control panel, for example, on Vulture or DigitalOcean, something like Plesk will have its own backup tool as well, which is just as easy to use, but you're hosting it yourself. CyberPanel is another popular one on the channel that has its own backup tool as well. For those of you from my Oracle tutorial using Hestia, now Hestia has a backup feature, but it's run from the command line, a little more complicated, but uh, worth learning how to use this if you've got the opportunity. And even if you're not running a control panel at all, you can run backup straight from the command line with the rsync command here. So over on ServerWise blog, I'll put the link in the description for this. You can learn the tutorial on how to run backups straight from the command line. And finally, for WordPress users, there are uh, WordPress plugins that do backups. I quite like um, WP Vivid, and I also like... Uh, WordPress Backup Guard as well. So both of these are pretty solid. If you're running a decent server and you've got some control of your PHP settings, backup plugins can work pretty well. Just be careful if you're on shared hosting or slow uh, shared hosting basically where you don't get access to your PHP settings. Some of these, um, they won't be allowed to run for as long as they need to run to complete an entire backup, especially if you've got a large site, um, some cheap shared hosts, these won't work too well. But on most decent VPSs, these will work okay for backing up a WordPress site. But um, like I said earlier, I think using your host control panel is a more reliable solution than a, a WordPress plugin. Some people just have trouble because they haven't developed the right skill set in WordPress. So this is probably the right time to talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Now is the perfect time to invest in yourself. With a Skillshare membership, you can engage in your hobbies and passions all year long. It's the perfect way to start and finally keep your resolutions for the new year. Make 2022 the year you perfect a new creative hobby, land a new career, or launch your business. Now, I was interested in joining Skillshare to become better at web development, so I'm taking a class called WordPress Academy, Learn WordPress Step-by-Step. Step. This is by Chris Dixon, extremely detailed here, 85 lessons, eight and a half hours of content here. So nearly 30,000 students doing this uh, class and you cover WordPress end to end, you'll get much, much better skills than you can actually find on YouTube. This really goes into full detail. So I really think this is gonna help my career um, in terms of web development. And it's also gonna help me deliver better tutorials for you guys, obviously. This class even shows us the basics of PHP. So for this example, we're doing some PHP functions. You can go um, learn the basics of PHP even in this class. So really great value um, from Chris Dixon here. Now there'll be a link down there in the description and in the comments, the first 1000 people to use the link will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. So check that out if you're interested, but let's get back to our top five WordPress mistakes. Next mistake a lot of us make when we're starting out is getting low quality hosting. So often the first host that we join or the second host that we join is not a great one because we haven't really learned a lot about how to select a good host. So let's talk about that. One thing you should be really careful of is hosts that offer big upfront discounts and they need you to uh, renew at a much higher rate because usually this tries to lock you in to a long term. And if you've got a poor quality web host, you're locked into a, a long term with a slow host. So that can be pretty devastating if that happens to you. You can usually tell um, if they require you to join for a year or longer than a year, pay a lot of money up front. That can be a bit of a red flag. Not always, but in a lot of cases, um, you're trapped and you've got a host that's not as fast as you would have liked. Now, you can actually test your host. So there's a couple of decent plugins on the WordPress repository, WordPress Hosting Benchmark 2 uh, tool by Anton Alexandrov. And there's also uh, WP Performance Test by Kevin Ohashi. Now, um, the previous one will give you a score out of 10 and anything around like a high six or a seven is pretty solid. Um, this one uh, by Kevin, it'll actually compare your host versus the industry average. So make sure you're getting something a little faster than the industry average and you should be set. So try those couple plugins. I think this is a better option than trying to run those Pingdom or GT metric scores, which are more network performance based. This will actually test your server performance on the back end. So check out those plugins and make sure your host is up to scratch. 
And there's obviously a few hosts that I recommend on the channel. I'll put links in the description for free trials and discounts. Vulture's obviously pretty good. There'll probably be Black Friday discounts at this time of the year if you're watching this video when it comes out. So Vulture's pretty good. Um, Cloudway's obviously pretty good. Um, SiteGround is quite good, especially for beginners. SiteGround's really easy as well as being good. A little more pricey than the others, but I quite like it. And Contabo, for the more technical of us, you can get like a pretty big server for pretty low cost. So um, in terms of its specs, um, pretty cool. Um, from Contabo. I've done a video on setting up Contabo as well. So um, again, links in the description for all this stuff. Now, when I was starting out, this was a huge issue. Too many plugins. This is my number three uh, top mistake that people make using WordPress. Too many plugins. So how many is too many? I actually made a video about this. It's actually fairly an interesting topic, I think. So check out that video. I'll put that in the description as well. Maybe I can put up in the corner here as well, but whatever. Um, you'll learn about how to choose good plugins, how to know how many is too many, and a lot of other stuff in that video. So check that one out. But basically, every time someone runs into a problem, they'll install a new plugin. So I want a form to do this. I want a form to do that. I want a form to do something else. They'll install three different form plugins to do basically the same job. They'll kind of uh, interfere with each other, slow the site down because you have to load all these different forms on different pages. And um, that's just one example. People will say, oh, my site's slow. So they'll install as many WordPress optimization plugins as they can find. And again, they, they conflict and give you extra trouble. So um, there's lots of general ideas about um, how to limit the number of plugins that you need and just try to be minimalistic about doing that. This one is about expired license plugins. So number four, expired plugins, especially when you buy a pro plugin, usually these days you only get the first one year of support and updates. So people might just buy it. And then after the year, um, it expires. Maybe they forget to renew it. The site keeps working just fine because it doesn't actually delete the plugin. The plugin will keep running, but it won't get updated in a lot of cases. Elementor Pro is a good example where um, it won't get updates and it can go out of date. It can break the site. It can also make the site insecure. So uh, make sure if you're using pro plugins that have ongoing licenses that you keep those licenses up to date. Otherwise, try to use good quality free plugins from the WordPress repository. Again, check out that WordPress plugins video that I mentioned earlier because that'll give you a good guide on choosing good plugins. Number five is not setting up transactional email correctly. Sometimes WordPress needs to send emails, uh, WooCommerce for your receipts and your product shipping updates, those kind of things, even for user account registration, user account password resets. These go to an email. You want to make sure this is set up properly. I see a lot of even big multi-million dollar businesses sending emails that aren't set up properly. And especially in Gmail, they get flagged as suspicious sometimes and it's not a good look if you haven't set up your email correctly. The good news is this is really quite simple to fix. Um, in a lot of cases, you can just use WP Mail SMT by WP Forms. This plugin is used by 3 million users and there's a good reason why this really is a solid way of setting up and testing and making sure your email from your WordPress sites are correctly configured. Again, I've covered this topic on the channel plenty of times. This email tutorial is probably the best one to start with, um, how to set up that SMTP plugin and also this best SMTP um, provider option as well there. Check out those couple of videos as well if you're interested in this topic. Also, you can just test your WordPress emails by sending test email to um, using mail tester, mail-tester.com and you can actually see the spamminess. You want to get at least um, seven, eight out of 10 uh, Ideally, you want to get 10, but it's really hard to get 10 out of 10. But yeah, eight or nine is entirely possible in a lot of cases. But uh, make sure you're not getting hit with um, a, high, uh, a bad spam score when you're testing out your email spamminess. You want to get everything configured correctly. If you're using that plugin I mentioned, the um, WP Mail SMTP, you can actually uh, run the email test from the plugin. So that makes it really easy as well. So that pretty much wraps up my top five mistakes. Let me know if there's anything obvious that I missed in the comments. I'll put that plugins video up on the end screen here. So that's probably the next one you'd want to check out if you haven't seen that one already. But thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.